Hey guys, and welcome back to the last video of this series, um, in which we are going to implement the graph or our bar chart with the MP Android chart library and basically set up everything that we need for that. And we are also going to implement the functionality that if we tap on a bar, that little pop up box opens that gives us more information about that specific run. Initially, I wanted to use a line chart for that, but that didn't look that good for me every time. So that's why I swapped that out for a bar chart. And that's what you have to do too, because if you got the XML resources from my GitHub repository, then you also have that line chart still. So make sure to go into your RAS package to fragment statistics XML. You can see that is our line chart. If we go to the code tab here, scroll to the bottom where that line chart is, we're going to rename that by pressing shift and F6 to bar chart. And we're also going to change the type of that to bar chart. And also don't forget to make the same change in our landscape layout file because we have two different layout files for a statistics fragment. Let's open that landscape layout too. And here we also need to change that from line chart to bar chart. And the ID is already changed. Afterwards, we can go back to our statistics fragment again, create a private function, set up a bar chart, because in this function, we're just going to make some UI changes so that our bar chart looks good. First of all, we're going to have our bar chart dot x axis dot apply. We're going to make some changes on our x axis. First of all, we want to set the position of that x-axis to the bottom because I think initially it is on the top. We don't want that. Let's set the position of it to x-axis position dot bottom. Then I'm going to um, disable the labels of our x-axis so that no values are there because later on you know, we will implement that we can click on that bar and basically display some details and then we don't need any entries on the x-axis because those will just be our runs in chronological order sorted by date. So we're just going to set draw labels to false. Then I'm going to set the axis line color to color.white because that looks good on our blue background. I'm going to change the text color to color.white and I'm going to set draw grid lines to false. So we disable that there's basically a grid in our graph. We don't want that. So I'll disable it, but you can leave it enabled if you want. Just try around with it and see how that looks. And next, we're going to make some changes to the left and the right axis of our bar chart. So bar chart dot left axis axis left dot apply. We're going to set the axis line color to white again, color.white, the text color to color.white again, and also set draw grid lines to false. Then we can copy that block of code here, paste it below, change that to axis right, because we want to have the same changes for our right axis. And finally, we're just going to write bar chart dot apply. We're going to set the description dot text of that bar chart to average speed over time. So just that we tell the user what this bar chart actually shows. And we're going to disable the legend. So legend dot is enabled is equal to false. The next thing we need to do here is to fill our chart with entries because if we scroll down to our subscribe to observers function in here, we are going to also observe on our view model dot run sorted by date. So we get the, the current up to date list from our view model of our run sorted by date. We observe on that, pass our view lifecycle owner and an observer block here. We check if that is not equal to null. And if it is not, we need to create a list of so-called bar entries. That is how the library manages that. So those bar entries basically contain the X value and the Y value of that specific bar. And the whole list of those bar entries will basically fill up our chart. 
for the x values of our bar entries, I will just choose the index of that run in our list so that, is, that it is just in chronological order. And for the Y values, we will, of course, choose the average speed because we will show the average speed over time in that bar chart. So in here, I'm going to create a val all average speeds, which I'm going to set to it.indices. So just the indices of our um, list of runs. So that will be a range that goes from zero to um, that run list dot size minus one. Then we're going to call the map function on that. We're going to name that variable i. So for each index in our list, we're going to map that index to a bar entry. And that bar entry takes an x value and a y value. The x value will just be i dot to float. And the y value will be our it, so our list of runs at the index of i dot average speed in kilometers per hour. Next, we need to create a bar data set out of those entries. So val bar data set is equal to bar data set. That now takes that list of bar entries. So we can just pass our all average speeds. And it takes a label for which I'm going, just going to choose average speed over time. Then we can call dot apply on that and set the value text color to color dot white and the color of those bars to our color accent so just color is equal to context compat dot get color pass require context here and r dot color dot color accent and after that we can set our bar chart dot data to a new bar data and in here we can pass our bar data set so we write bar data set and if we then call bar chart dot invalidate that means we just want to update the bar chart with our changes and that will be enough to display our bars in our bar chart but what we also want to be able to do is to be able to click on those bars and display a little pop-up window with the details of that specific run we clicked on and for that, we need to create what is called a marker view. That is just a view that is basically the pop-up box of that um, bar chart when we click on that. And for that, we need to create a custom version of that uh, marker view because we want to show our own data. And for that, I already included that XML layout, marker view XML here, which you can get from the link in the description from my GitHub repository. So just copy and paste that in your XML layout files. You can see that is just a little pop-up window here. You can also just create your own layout. This doesn't look that good, but it serves our purpose here. And if you have done that, we can go to our other package, create a new um, cotton file of class, call it custom marker view, select class here. This class is going to take our list of runs. So val runs is a list of type run because we need that list of runs to be able to display or to, to fill that pop-up window with the corresponding data of that run. Then it will need the context. So just val, not val, we can just use C here, which is of type context, because we're only going to need that context in the constructor of the marker view from which we will inherit. So C is a context and we're also going to need the layout ID of the marker view basically. So what I just showed you, that is an integer. This class will inherit from marker view. And here we just pass our context C and our layout ID. In this class body, we are going to override refresh content in which we can basically set the the text of our text views of that pop-up window accordingly. Here we get the current entry of our um, bar chart basically. And with that entry, we can access our runs list. So to actually get the right run for the right entry. But first of all, you can see that entry is nullable. We want to check if E is equal to null. If that is null, we're just going to return here. If it is not null, we can get the current ID of that run that we want to display.
by writing val current run id and set that to e so our bar entry dot x dot to int which might be a little bit confusing here why we write that x here but if you remember in our statistics fragment we mapped the indices of our list of runs to our bar entry so the x values of our bar entries are actually the indices of our run so we can just use those x values in our custom marker view to get the current index of the run we want to display here so if we have that index here we can also get the run we are talking about by writing runs so our list of runs at the index of current run id and the rest in this function is actually the same as for our recycler view adapter we can go inside of our adapters package run adapter scroll down to this apply block here and in here we're going to copy that block here because we want to have the same values in our pop-up window so copy that go back to our custom marker view and just paste that in and we only need to change the names of this tv time because i think i called this tv duration here yes from marker view xml make sure to choose that one and that tv calories is not tv calories instead it's tv calories burned also from marker view xml and then also make sure to scroll up to your imports and you can see it automatically imported the text views from our item run so from our recycler view item and we don't want that of course because then it will crash because it can't find those items in that pop-up window so let's remove those four import statements here and that is basically it we don't have any errors because it can find those entries here tv date tv average speed and so on in our marker view um, layout file basically and one last function we need to override here is get offset yes get offset here which returns an mp point f which is just a point basically with an x and y value and here we can set the offset of our pop-up window so we can specify the position where that should show because initially if those bars are very low then this box is very often cut off and we don't want that of course so what we want to do here is we want to return mp point f capital p here and you can see that takes an x and y value for the x value i'm going to choose a negative width of that marker view divided by 2f and for the height i'm going to choose negative height dot to float so if you're wondering where those values come from i just got them from the documentation of mp android chart and they look pretty good then if we now go back to our statistics fragment here we can assign that custom marker view to our bar chart so we write bar chart dot marker set that to new custom marker view here we need to pass our list of runs and for that I'm going to choose it.reversed because our list of runs is sort of descending so the latest one will be the first one in that list and in our bar chart we want to have the reverse list so we want to have the first one at the first index basically so we will reverse that list then as a second parameter we have to pass the context just pass require context and as a layout id i'm going to choose r.layout.marker view and if we now scroll up here and call our setup bar chart function in our onview created function then we can launch our app and see if everything is working there we go let's actually add a new run here play root click on start there we go tracking let's click on stop finish run and if we now click on statistics they you can see our two bars in our bar chart and if we click on one of those bars you can see our pop-up window and on that one it looks fine too you can see nothing is cut off it looks pretty good and yeah that is basically it for our running app series that is the end of this tutorial i hope you learned a lot of new stuff in this series so i would be actually very interested in which new stuff you learned so please tell me that in the comments 
that would be very cool to know which new concept you just learned. And yeah, just have fun with this app. Maybe you can extend it to learn some new stuff. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.